And we're on the air for the second week of the online portion of the Agora project. Um, I'll go through and just do introductions. I just want to mention if someone wants to jump in and join us online here, please bring headphones so we don't get so much feedback. If you can, even earbuds from your phone will be great. And I'll bring up a screen share just quickly here and say that you can send a direct tweet to Ken Bauer, Ken underscore Bauer. If you direct tweet me, I have it open, you can direct tweet me and I will add you into the conversation if you want to join us online live. I'll stop the screen share and I'm going to pass off the round table. We'll start off with uh, Alan's on my far left here, so I'll let Alan introduce himself quickly. I wasn't ready, I was tweeting Ken. But <laughs> Sorry buddy. Well again, thanks Ken for hosting us. Uh, Alan Levine coming to you from uh, the den of my office in Strawberry, Arizona. Okay, and I'll jump over to Nancy. I don't know if Brian has a microphone working, so... Uh, 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 doesn't show. Uh, waving from Seattle, Washington, hola todos. And Terry? Hey everyone, I'm here in Comox on La Isla de Vancouver. Nice to see you. Excellent. And Tanis is here. Hello everybody. I'm going to be leading this um, Google Hangout today and it is really a question answer type opportunity for you as well. So we are going to be using the hashtag UDG Agora to receive your questions. Um, and as Ken mentioned, you can also DM him as well. And also after we've posted the recording of the session, we will be able to take question and questions and answers in the DLO as well. Excellent. Thanks, Tanis. And we'll jump over to Brian. Let's see if we have audio. Brian Lamb in uh, Kamloops, British Columbia, Canada. Uh, great to be here. Yes. Oh, nice shirt there, Alan. Uh, at, yes, at Thompson Rivers University. Excellent. So I'll hand it off here to Tanis. Okay, great. Um, so I'm going to be screen sharing today and just showing a few things to um, help guide our discussion. And um, the first thing that I just wanted to mention is that the student feedback part of the challenges is really um, about formative evaluations about learning. So you shouldn't feel like this is um, a judgment of your teaching or um, a judgment about how well you actually implemented your challenge. It's really an opportunity to get the perspective of the students, the users, or the receivers of your challenge and help you understand and help your colleagues understand some considerations um, for implementing these challenges with students. So once again, it's all about learn, learning, learning from what we're doing, learning by doing. Uh, maybe I'll let Ken just do a quick uh, recap of that in Spanish. Oh, wow, I should have paid more attention. Um, <laughs> realmente el enfoque de todo ese proceso en línea, de hecho tuve en conversación con café con gente aquí en Guadalajara, es queremos enfocar que este proceso es sobre implementar su, su proceso nuevo con sus alumnos y hablamos hoy en la tarde, er, hoy hace una hora, que queremos saber qué vas a cambiar en tu clase, meter ese cambio en tu clase y tomar una manera de, de retroalimentación de sus alumnos en, y compartir eso con nosotros. El, el proceso realmente es sobre mejorar el aprendizaje en sus salones de clases. And I think I covered that. Sounds good. Okay, so where to start? So you've done a challenge with your student. You plan, you're planning your challenges right now. And you've decided when you're going to be able to implement your challenge. But you want to think already about how am I going to get student feedback on my challenge and share it in the Agora. So first of all, I, you probably want to start with, um, I'm just going to screen share here. You probably want to start with what are the questions, okay? So I'm going to jump in here and find my questions over here. Okay, cool. And I've got a document here that um, we can, we'll share the link to. This is an open document for everybody to view so you can see what um, some of the things that we're talking about today. But here are some ideas for some questions that you might want to ask your students. And I'm not saying do all five of these questions, because actually five would probably be a lot. Um, but you might, you might want to ask them, you know, what did you learn? Um, 
did this activity, did this challenge that I implemented actually support your learning? Um, what would you suggest to, from a perspective of a student that um, an instructor would need to do differently? Um, what was the best thing about this new approach or activity that we tried in our class? So it's really these open questions that are really trying to get at um, student perceptions of the activity and how it went. Ken, do you think it's time for a quick translation there? or? Um, I'll, I'll do it quickly because ba basically a document's there so they can read it. Um, yeah. Can you turn off share for a second? Oh, sure, yeah. i got to go back to Google to do that here. Stop. There we go. Stop. There you go. So I'll bring it over to me and I'll share my screen. One second. I want to share this. Okay. Uh, listo. Entonces, aquí tengo una liga que hicimos bit.ly, agora student feedback con mayúscula A, S, F. Esa es una liga, el documento que está hablando ahorita Tanes, entonces no voy a traducir tanto porque la verdad, pues ya la pueden leer ahí el dentro del documento. Voy a buscar el documento aquí que tengo arriba. Aquí lo tengo enfrente de mí. Uh, realmente es, Tanes preparó ese documento sobre retroalimentación de alumno con la idea que debes estar pensando cuáles son los mejores uh, cambios que puedes hacer con tus alumnos, cuál es la reacción a ese nuevo cambio, uh, qué aprendiste tú, cómo, cómo diste soporte de ese aprendizaje o esa nu actividad nueva en tu salón, o si no lo hiciste, y qué sugieres que haces en el, en el futuro. Entonces, yo creo que tiene que ver aquí, y eso es donde entra Dilo, en mi opinión, Vamos pensando qué vamos a hacer en el salón de clases. Eso es lo que debemos estar haciendo en esta semana. Entra a Dilo o solamente con su triad y compartir. Tengo esa idea, quiero hacer algo y a ver si tengo mejores o ideas del grupo de 45 o el grupo de 300 para ver cómo podemos hacerlo. Ok. Estoy leyendo lo que dice Nancy. Example of some just to feedback. Ok. All right. Eso fue para nosotros. Entonces, I'll, I'll give it back to Tanis now. Okay, thank you. So I'm going to go back to screen sharing again. Sure. And I'm going to just show you um, a couple of ways that you can gather or um, obtain or grab student feedback. So the first one I have here is creating a Google form. And some of you may know how to do this. I think this is probably the easiest thing to do. So I'm just going to jump on here and show you an example that I just put together yesterday. So Google Forms let you very easily create simple surveys, and I'll show you how to get in to do that. But basically, it lets you have different question types. And here I tried to play with um, a question type that lets students select a, a scale from strongly agree to strongly disagree. So here I wanted to know, for example, in my sample um, planning document that I shared with you, last week, or this week, I can't remember, um, I chose a, a challenge that I would implement with my class around creating a collaborative open textbook. And I'm now I'm, I want, I'm writing the questions, I'm putting the questions out that I want to know about how this activity worked for my students. And in this case, I want to know whether this activity for the students helped their learning more than simply reading a textbook for class and summarizing. So that's a question I want to know, and that's one I really want to have um, strongly agree to strongly disagree. Then I have a couple open-ended questions here. The best thing about this activity was, and then the students can just type in and answer that. The thing I would change about this activity, again, students just type it in, they submit it, and on the back end of this page in my Google Docs, I will have an Excel file that gives me all the data and all the answers which is great because then you can create little charts or you can summarize it very quickly and very easily. So I think for in terms of getting student feedback, this is probably the easiest way to do it. Um, now let me just show you how you would create a new, um, a new quiz, a new survey. I'm going to go into new from Google Docs or from wherever, new form. That's what the one that you want. And basically you give it a title here, student feedback on XYZ, XYZ challenge. And then I can ask my question here, and I can choose different question types, okay? 
you, you choose the one, you click done, then you move on to the next question. And at the end, you have a link, a live form link here that you can share with your students. And they can do this on their phones, they can do this in class, they can do this out of class, but it just makes it very simple to gather feedback and to um, be able to do something and share this feedback back at the end of your implementation. Any questions yet? I'll just take a pause here. Are you guys seeing anything in Twitter? I'm not watch watching Twitter. I was going to say I'll jump in with a Spanish, but I have to unmute my mic first. Okay. Uh, 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 go ahead, Alan. Oh, Twitter's pretty quiet right now. Yeah, Excellent Twitter's press. quiet, so I was actually going to say something here. That one thing we could do is maybe I'm thinking, because Twitter's quiet, maybe this is a bad time for some people who are in class or something. So maybe we'll make a form and ask people if this time works for a Hangout. Um, Basically, uh, básicamente, Tanis está mostrando que, en mi opinión también, los forms de Google es una excelente manera y súper fácil de, de pedir retroalimentación de sus alumnos en, en, el, en el proceso. Son muy fáciles de diseñar y una vez que los alumnos contestan, genera un, un hoja de cálculo ahí en Google Docs para que puedan ver las respuestas de los alumnos. So I gave it the quick translation there, Tanis. Great. Um, I just got a quick uh, Skype uh, message from Kike who needs the link to the Google Hangout. He would like to join. Could, could somebody actually um, uh, send I that can to send him? That. I'm sending it to him via direct message. Keep going. Perfect. So, okay. Uh, I don't know if he's on Twitter, though. Yeah, I, I put two examples from my group um, that they're, how they're getting feedback, and both of them are really interesting and, and different. Oh, um, good. One was using memes which oh. were pretty funny. I, I, I am very interested to know what uh, what happened before the meme, so I haven't heard the full story. And the second one was using a student forum for getting feedback on the process. And so I put the link to that DLO discussion um, uh, Nancy, and the, your Nancy, ideas at them below. Nancy, but I think, yes? Uh, remember, your DLO group, only people in your group can see that link. So. Oh, I thought everybody could see all of them now. No. No, you can. We were, uh, so it's going to be time to do that pretty soon, I think. <laughs> well, that that's a call, but a suggestion is you can quote that entire thing and put it in the open agora. If okay, you maybe we need a feedback yeah. thread, and I'll do that. Yeah, the, the idea I'll was. I'll do not, that right now. The idea was not to overload people with seeing so many different yeah. discussion areas. Yeah, and Kike, you're not following me, so I can't DM you with the link. I'll yeah. I'll send it to him in Skype. Thanks. Thank you. Um, I really love that there are people who are already thinking about how to gather student feedback, and both of these ideas I think are great. So I, I really hope to see more because really it's just a start. There's lots of creative ways to get student feedback, including um, you know Nancy's visual means of of just expressing it on paper and sharing that as a photo as well. So this is great. I think the key with um, the student feedback, um, some of the examples I'm providing are really, I'm trying to think about a context where you as a professor have 30 students and you're trying to get feedback from 30 students and summarize that to the Agora. So some ways are easier to do than others. So um, that's a consideration of course as well. Are we good? Should I keep going on? I think so. Okay. Um, so the next one is one that I haven't um, used in a while, but it came to mind as a simple, easy way to um, get student feedback, and that's Poll Everywhere. So in Poll Everywhere, you can create a free account, and as long as you have no more than 40 um, students to respond to your poll, I, I believe it stays free. So basically, I'm just going to demonstrate um, how I did that. So this is my live poll, and I think it's my live poll. Wait a sec. Your audience will see the content below. Wait a sec. I don't have the right one open. Here we go. This is my dashboard, and I've created on, on my account three questions. Each question is a poll, and I've asked the best thing about the activity was, the thing I would change about this activity was, and I think I learned more by writing chapters for a textbook than simply reading or summarizing. And let me show you what this means, because you can have different ways of displaying this data. So basically, I'm just going to demonstrate... Oh, I got feedback there. <laughs> ah, that was weird. Really delayed. <laughs> uh, 
Um, so in this case, I used, um, I think it's called a text cloud or something, to show the data for two fake responses that I had, um, where you're in a class, you share the poll um, question, and students, you can see here, all they have to do is text this digit, um, or, or this, this, these letters, or this digit, to basically provide their response. So this is something you can do in the class. And it gives you this nice display of data as well. I mean, obviously, there's only two answers here. You can't see too much. But it gives you a different way of looking at um, the data. Go away. <laughs> this is a different example. I, did I do a text cloud here? I don't know what kind of data um, example I did here. I'm just trying to see. Let's see what the um, settings are. OK, here we go. I can have a text wall which makes it look like this. I can have a word cloud, which um, in this case for open question, unless it's just one word, I think it's, doesn't, it's not very meaningful. Um, I can do it in clusters, and I can do it as a ticker, which basically just in, make, activates um, all the feedback. So there's different ways of actually displaying the data after, which I think is quite interesting. So it's, it's free. It's fairly open. Um, it can be done easily in class, and there's different ways of presenting the feedback. So it's an idea to consider. Cool. All good? Cool. Should I keep going? Okay. Um, let's, so that was one. Let's, uh, Terry had a question come in via Twitter. You want to do that, Terry? Or shall I? Go ahead. No, I'll do it. So a question came in via Veronica Pena. Uh, so can we use Twitter for feedback? Ah, yes, you can, of course. And actually, I thought I put that on the list, but I didn't. I'll add um, it. Was, yeah, it was Twitter and Storyfy, which I think um, you saw Nancy do that really nicely in the face-to-face. -face. Um, so you'll, you're going to want to have a hashtag, though, that your students use so that you can Storyfy it easily later. And the UDG Agora one won't work because you'll get everything else mixed in there. Correct, Nancy? Yeah, you'll need a separate hashtag. So like in my studio, yeah. we used UDG Agora and liberating structures, and then I could pull the, the precise uh, posts. Mm -hmm. Let me jump over to Alan's got something to contribute here. Uh, uh, well, about Twitter, I mean, the thing, first of all, with a hashtag is, uh, as people are suggesting, you want to find one that no one is using. Um, for example, now um, Alejandro Alaverdi is doing something with his students where they're tweeting me a lot of photos, and I'm enjoying that. Um, I don't know how he's going to actually figure out, because that stuff just flows on by. So um, Storify is one great way to sort of build a collection, because you choose the stuff that you put in and the order. Um, it's very good. If people are interested, I can maybe do a write-up. Um, the um, Twitter tags worksheet that we use for UDG Agora um, that has the big kind of crazy cloud, um, also collects all the data. And so you can record that um, by hashtag or particular account, and that captures every tweet in a Google spreadsheet. Um, and there are a lot of other ways that you can use. We're using tag board. There's all kinds of things you can think about to sort of gather that information that students may be responding. Um, a bigger question is, like, what exactly are you asking them to respond to? Um, you know, if you want short answer response, yeah, that could work. Uh, Nancy shared an example of students tweeting out photos. That could work. Um, students could do short videos and, and do a response. Um, so it's more about um, thinking about what is a creative way that students can um, express themselves uh, in a way that's meaningful, and then how can you collect it? Okay. I think an important thing to mention, too, is you can do combinations. So you could, for example, combine Twitter feedback with um, some students creating YouTube videos, which I'll demonstrate next. So um, whatever you need to be meaningful and whatever is feasible, whatever is um, actually doable. Um, Ken, did you, did, is it time yeah, for let a me, quick... Let me do a screen share there. I, I think we're fine on the translation. Um, OK. Uh, I want to say Kike is here. I don't know if his mic is unmuted to say hello. Hi, Kike. Hola, ¿cómo están? Perdón por la tardanza, es que eh, llegué un poco tarde, pero me faltaba el link, pero ya estoy aquí. Muy okay. bien. 
Muy bien, gracias. I was gonna I was gonna share that that uh, that Nancy sent. So Alan just mentioned about using a hashtag to get feedback from your students via Twitter, and that goes to Vero's question. So I'm going to screen share this here in a second. Uh, be careful, some of it's not safe for work. Uh, so the thing is, when you ask your students to share, you don't know what they're going to share. Well, sharing's good. So I, th I think, uh, let me get it, there we go. I think I got this shared. Are you seeing this now, guys? Oh, sorry, I have to turn off my screen share, don't I? Okay. Hang on a sec, where am I? Uh, I think I'm sharing. Yeah, I'm sharing. <laughs> You're sharing? Okay. So I'm sharing, so I'll just scroll down a bit. So uh, uh, who was using this? This was uh, Cynthia, I believe. Cynthia Lopez. Yes, Cynthia Lopez. And so, sh so what she did, you can see there's this hashtag, Agora uh, y son reto. So she decided to use this hashtag, or I'll do it in Spanish, uh, decidió usar esa etiqueta de, de Twitter para que sus alumnos puedan dar retroalimentación o contribuir a, a la discusión de MADT. Eh, el, el chiste aquí de buscar un, un hashtag es, es chécala, haz un búsqueda en Twitter para ver si alguien más está usando esa misma etiqueta, porque a veces vas a tener conflicto entre otras conversaciones. Busca algo que realmente es, es, un, es, es único y pidió que sus alumnos compartan sus, sus imágenes a esa etiqueta. Y como dijo Allen, hay una manera, a lo mejor Alan va a compartir, a lo mejor lo gano mandando un blog post sobre cómo usar ese sistema de Martin Hoxie, de, de seguir uh, etiquetas en Twitter y grabarlo en un Google Doc y luego puedes procesarlo y a lo mejor ponerlo en Storefire o algo así. So that was the Spanish version. I don't know if uh, anyone wanted to contribute to that view, Nancy. The only thing is, if you look at that thing, you click into those images to actually see the text on the memes in most yeah. views. Yeah, I wasn't sure which ones I wanted to click on. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe when we're not recording. <laughs> okay, so we good to move on or? I think so. Okay, so I think, so Ken, when you screen share, does it kick me out automatically? It should, yeah. Oh, good, okay. I, I was actually worried about that. Okay. Just just uh, remember, Tannis, only what Ken configures as the active camera is what goes out on the stream. So. Right. Okay. Got it. I have to remember to click or leave it auto. Okay. okay. So I'm going back to my document here. And then the next one is um, having students create a YouTube video and share their feedback. So in this case, I think, again, as I said, um, you have to ask yourself whether you want every single student in the class to create a YouTube video and um, how long you want that video to be. Because um, really, with the three question one, I tr tested it myself. It takes about 30 seconds to answer three questions really concisely. Um, and if you have 30 students with 30 second videos, it's, you know, you have to watch all of those. And um, us in the Agora as well um, want to be able to have a summary or something of some of that feedback. So consider maybe with video having maybe groups of students. So for example, in my activity, which is create um, collaboratively create an open textbook you, uh, by assigning groups of students to chapters, you could have each group of students do a collective video to share their feedback on the activity. Um, I feel like I said that really fast. So maybe um, if you wouldn't mind, Ken. Or Kike, did you pay or attention? Kike. Can you translate <laughs> that? <laughs> I'll remove my multitasking. Ok. Bueno, lo que nos comenta Tanis es al respecto de recibir retroalimentación de los estudiantes por medio de YouTube. Y bueno, nosotros debemos de considerar qué formato de video eh, queremos en que los estudiantes nos brinden esa retroalimentación, qué, qué tan largo va a ser este video. Ella eh, nos menciona que para contestar, por ejemplo, tres preguntas, eh, un video de 30 segundos puede ser algo adecuado pero hay que considerar que pueden hacer también videos en grupo. Ella, por ejemplo, está planteando una actividad grupal, entonces este, cada grupo puede hacer un video para brindar retroalimentación al respecto de cómo consideran que transcurrió esa actividad. Wow, Kike, you're amazing. Y yo creo que también Tanis lo mencionó, considero los tiempos, porque a mí me pasa eso, mis alumnos están grabando videos y se pasan, unos alumnos graban videos de 15 minutos y tengo que verlos. Entonces, uh -huh. a lo mejor quieren reducirlo a, a pues hay un límite de 30 segundos o algo así para que no estás pasando demasiado tiempo viendo videos. Uh -huh. Hola, yeah. mis alumnos que graban videos enormes. Yeah, <laughs> and 
And I think Alan, sometimes I was going to pass. Oh, sorry. To Alan was going to say something about analytics. I want to get that in before we oh. sure lose it. Absolutely. And also, this idea about not having like a billion videos to watch and evaluate yeah. um, goes the same. I do this to myself when I teach blogging. I end up having to read, and so you may want to think about strategies that take you always primarily as the instructor about being the feedback provider. Um, so maybe there's some way to combine this. Maybe there's videos and you have some Google Forms for students to do uh, peer feedback on each other's group. Uh, the thing I was uh, mentioning is I always forget this. When you publish a YouTube video, um, only you see this, but there's a button there that says analytics. And you can get all kinds of crazy detailed information on how much stuff is being viewed. Uh, it may not matter for a, a class project, mm -hmm. but what happens is when a teacher says, students, do a video for me, they do a video for the teacher. Mm -hmm. and, um, and most of my videos on YouTube get about 10 views. Um, so it may be appropriate for a project um, or something where it's put on the students um, to get their video out and somehow be seen by their colleagues or their family or other uh, teachers. So if you put a different sort of you know, activity level on it, okay, you've created a video, now collect feedback on your video from people by watching and commenting, etc. When you go into those analytics, you don't just see the number of times it's been viewed. You see where in the world it's from, you see what links they followed. Um, so How much of it they saw as opposed to watching the whole thing. Yeah, so it, it's more than just collecting. Um, a lot of the focus, the first thing we think of is surveying students. And so um, because this stuff goes into these online places, often there are other things that can give us um, some measure about um, impact or reach or, um, you know, and, and not just all about popularity. So I just want to let people know that um, some of those tools are out there. Cool. Thanks. Okay, so for for our students to create videos in YouTube, um, I believe they actually you have to have a Google account, correct? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. So you have a Google account, a Gmail account, or whatever, and then they can just go to a page um, on YouTube where they can directly just record a video um, here. Let me just um, demonstrate that. I just that. learned something. <laughs> I can just click start recording and I can do my demo video and blah blah blah. Um, I stop recording and continue. Let's see what continue takes me to. Cool. And then I have a way of um, easily sharing this. I just ignored all this, um, but you can you can share it publicly or privately or unlisted. So if you if your students have concerns about um, you know having this on YouTube forever. Um, Perhaps an unlisted option is better. So let me just do that. And then you, you can save it, and then it, there's a way of sharing the link. Let me just see what happens here. Um, it just sort of goes into my video manager here. You can see I've done this many times. <laughs> and then I guess I have to find a way to grab the link. Does anybody know how to do click, that? Click on the video, the webcam video from August 8, 28, so you bring it up, and then oh, go yeah, to the share. We go. Oh yeah. Okay. So there we go. There we go. Okay. So wasn't that so easy, if you right? If you scroll down a bit, there's a share button below your name. Good. Oh, good. And then there's the analytics here too, so you can get mm -hmm. that basically. So I, I think that's a super simple way for students to actually share um, uh, feedback. Again, keeping in mind that you don't want them going on for 10 minutes. I mean, there really has to be a limit to a time limit, I think, to make this feasible. Um, some. Whoa, Nancy is calling us or something. Oh, okay. I was wondering what that was. I was like, is Sorry, that my Skype? I think I hung up on you, Nancy. <laughs> um, okay, so that there we have YouTube videos. But again, consider maybe just having a few students do that or, you know, a sample of students. Um, next one. I'm going to... I'm going to jump down, sorry Nancy, but I'm jumping down to VoiceThread because this, again, is pretty cool. I think this would be a really easy way to do an interactive, um, an interactive way of having students give feedback on um, an activity. So here, basically, what I can do is um, I've put three questions up here 
best thing you learned from this activity? What would you change? Did you learn anything? And actually, I originally had actually had a video in there, so I can actually create a video in VoiceThread and um, ask students via video here. You know, did you learn anything? What would you change, etc. So I'm showing you the view right now of a student going to this and responding. And basically, I have different options for making comments. I can do it by audio, by video, or I can do just a simple comment in, in, in text. So, oh shoot, I forgot I'm in Safari. It doesn't work very well in Safari. You have to do this in Chrome or Firefox. <laughs> Let's move on. Um, but I want to show you just maybe quickly what that would look like, because it, I think it keeps everything contained on one page. And, um, and then you have you have an option you have different options for students to actually provide feedback and you can make these threads totally open so all they need is a link um, to you have to create an account of course but um, okay I'm totally messing up this demo here <laughs> bear with me. Um, and now everybody has my uh, email this is great um, I'll make it smaller. Thank you. <laughs> they already have it. <laughs> they do, technically. But the whole world has it now, but yeah. that's probably not hard. Um, so I'm going to type a text comment here. And, oh, it's not working for me. I, you know what? I wonder if this is because I'm on Skype. Could be. I so. think. So really, what if, if you go to VoiceThread and you want to create... Um, if you want to create new boards, voice boards, basically just log into an account. It gives you an option right away to create a video or an audio where you ask your questions, and then students have that comment box once you've shared the link where they can go in and respond as they need. Um, but I think I think it's too much for having Skype or Google Hangout and this going on at the same time. It can is, yeah, it's yeah. the um, your camera can only be used by the Hangout. Um, oh, right. that's why. Okay. But, but VoiceThread um, works very effectively. I've seen people do it with just an image as the, the driver. Um, yeah, yeah or a slide or something. Yeah, then people can respond uh, in their method of choice. They can respond with uh, audio, video, or just a short text comment. Yeah. And I've made it, 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 they've made it even simpler, I mean, compared to how it was two months ago. It really is go in, make it public, share the link, and it's very easy for your students to get to. And then you can share it very easily back to the Agora. So I think in terms of options, it's a really good one. Um, do I need to stop for a translation, or are we good? Any questions? You want to jump in, Kike? I don't see any questions coming in. OK. Eh, bueno, hace, hace ratito que no, no hemos traducido. Y algo de lo que comentaban, eh, por ejemplo, ah. ¿sí? Ahí está. Perdón. Adelante, Kike. Ah, ok. Alan estaba comentando al respecto de las posibilidades de ver las estadísticas de los videos de YouTube. De forma de que tú puedes darte cuenta eh, que el número de reproducciones y otras estadísticas al, al respecto de desde dónde están viendo estos videos, etcétera. Hay mucha información disponible. Entonces, este, también Tani se estaba diciendo que en los videos de YouTube, a un ladito, hay un botón en, eh, con el que pueden compartir los videos porque eh, nosotros podemos configurar para que este video sea público, sea privado, este, para, solamente para los que tengan la dirección del video, este, o para que no salga como resultado de las búsquedas. Entonces, se puede compartir, se puede medir el impacto, el alcance un poquito ahí a través de las estadísticas de, de los videos de YouTube, etcétera. Entonces, solamente ten, tenemos que tener una cuenta de Google, eh, los estudiantes pueden grabar un video, y bueno, definitivamente se tiene que estandarizar para que no sean videos de 10 minutos, sino que sea algo usable, y, y a lo mejor hacerlo solamente con un grupo de estudiantes, no con todos. Y después, eh, Tanis nos estaba mostrando eh, una aplicación que es VoiceThread, que es una forma muy interactiva de obtener retroalimentación, eh, porque tú puedes eh, preguntar mediante un video, por ejemplo, si aprendieron la lección, si aprendieron algo, este, y los estudiantes pueden dejar comentarios en audio, video o texto, de forma que mantienes todo en una sola página, y eh, tú puedes dejar esa página abierta para que todos la vean, ¿no? Eh, se llaman voice boards, que funcionan como eh, hilos de discusión, y pudieras tú nada más dejar una imagen o una diapositiva, y puede ser esto suficiente para que los estudiantes empiecen a conversar y retroalimentar a través de VoiceThread 
al respecto de esta imagen o esta diapositiva. Eh, es algo simple de hacer y solamente requiere que saquemos una cuenta ahí en VoiceThread. I, I've decided to kick it has to be here because I, I can't pay attention to what people are saying and then translate. That just blows me away. But That wait a minute, awesome. wait a minute, man. Don't just like throw all the translate on Kike. He needs to oh my participate goodness. in the conversation. That was awesome. It was great. Uh, I also um, learned something new with Tana's shows. I didn't know there was a button in there in YouTube to just record straight from the page. So that, I'm going to share that with my students. That's cool. I always send them to other tools. There's also a very simple uh, editor, so if you've got a YouTube clip and you want to chop the beginning or the end off or just do some sequencing. Like stuff. Tannis's email. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yes, exactly. That was VoiceThread. <laughs> um, okay, so the next one then. Um, actually, I'm going to let... Is, is Nancy able to participate or...? Yeah, I'm, I'm here I'm just on audio. I'm on my phone because our internet connectivity crapped out. Okay. Dialing in is Nancy. <laughs> yes, exactly. Maybe, uh, Nancy, if you could talk about using um, a liberating structure for getting student feedback, because I think that takes it to a nice level of participation. So, you know, if you're trying to get the students to think about something together and make meaning together, things like what, so what, now what, are a very quick way to get feedback. Um, and you can use this in your class anytime if you want to make sure they're understanding what's going on in general. But you simply ask, what just happened? And, um, and you ask them to actually observe. And it's, it, the important thing here is sometimes our students don't start out with great critical observational or thinking practices. They may be good at it but not used to applying it in the classroom. So you, you need to prompt them to say, what did you really observe? And then, so what is, you know, why does it matter? What meaning can we take from it? So if we used memes, uh, why, why, would, you know, why was the meme useful or not? What was your experience with the meme? And then the final question is, what next? So what would they do as a result of what they learned? So how would you take what you learned and apply it, which you know, we know is really useful in a learning context? And there's a number of other uh, simple processes from the Liberating Structures repertoire that you can use. Cool. Right. Focus off Nancy here. OK. Um, so basically, we have, we have some other um, options here to gather student responses. So we talked about Twitter and Storyfy. Um, and then there's also some really good examples that people um, are already starting to do. And this is a space for you. If there's something that you've thought about and you want to share back to the Agora in terms of your ideas on how to get student feedback, you might have some really creative way that we haven't thought of. The purpose of this was just to get you started um, thinking about how to get student feedback and really thinking about how much feedback and how is it going to be shared? Um, those are really the key things to consider at this point in your planning of your implementations. So um, I'm, I'm done here, but please, um, please jump into the Google Doc at any point um, in Spanish as well. That's not a problem. And add your ideas. We will share this video back to Dilo. And we will be able to also answer any questions um, for anybody who is viewing the video afterwards and didn't have a chance to ask questions. Um, does anybody else from my group want to, um, from the, the Google Hangout instructor group, want to add anything? So I'm going to bring back that uh, Google Doc link again here quickly. Let me screen share that. So if some people missed it at the beginning, I shared this at the beginning. I'm trying to find it. Ah, uh, it was yeah. bit.ly dot student. There we go. So bit.ly agora student feedback is the document that Tanis was showing and sharing, and uh, you can go and check it out there, and we'll send that out as well with our other communications if you want to jump in on that. Um, let me stop the screen share here. And Terry was saying that low tech can work too, a paper in the classroom. So mm -hmm. that's always a good way to, to share. And some people have been sharing, even via Twitter, what they're doing in their classrooms, via, via pi pictures of what's going on in the classroom, to e Twitter or on the uh, DLO uh, as well to let everyone else know what they're doing. So I think the, the show and share is really helpful if you can do that in DLO as well. Can, can I just say, sometimes it's hard to know what the context is. I, I'm yeah. saying a lot of great Twitter stuff, but um, 
I have no idea what people are doing, <laughs> and I'm curious. Um, and Twitter, you can't really explain right. the entire classroom um, activity. So we hope you use DLO, or some people are doing... Or a blog post. Uh, or, or blogs. Mm -hmm. uh, but it would be really helpful to know what some of these um, assignments are, because I mean, I'm, we've seen pictures of people with... Um, drawings. Uh, Brian has some photo of a urinal. I have no idea <laughs> what that is. Yeah, I think last that... night I saw a whole bunch of really great memes from students, and I ended up retweeting some of them. But yeah, I'm, like Alan said, I really am I not sure what I'm referencing. I get the sense it's something quite interesting, judging from some of the back and forth I'm seeing between them. But yeah, I don't have access that I've been able to find to like an overarching description of what what's actually happening. Yeah. I, I think the key to, is really to understand that these photos and things that people are sharing, um, those are great artifacts that support your implementation. But ultimately, when you share back, um, we, we need to um, have a good idea as to what you did, why you did it, and how you did it. And those artifacts are very useful to support the what and the why and the how. Um, but of course, really at the end of the day, um, we need as a group to understand what it means all together. Um, so keep, keep tweeting your photos and all that good stuff, but ultimately keep in mind that at the end, uh, we need to have a whole sort of complete picture of um, what the student feedback was, what the summary of that is, what you did, why, and how. We got a shout out from DMC Vallarta, which is Vivian, saying, yeah. yep, she's watching us, so that's great. So you know, someone's watching. <laughs> Yay, hello. Thank you. At least tell us you're here. Also, um, you know, I don't know, you know, if it if it's the same in, in Mexico, but um, when I work with faculty in North America, uh, when you ask some people to share their teaching practices, there's this kind of reluctance of like, oh, it's really not a big deal, or it's not that good. It's not as good as Ken Bauer. Um, and so people kind of downplay um, what they're trying and experimenting with because they already judge it um, um, ahead of time as not being very interesting. And right. so um, it's, it's hard to get people to come over that because we, as humans, we kind of, you know, judge ourselves compared next to others. And I think that's important because I used to say that a lot. And, and then I go to a conference and I'd see someone present something. I, I've already done that. I could do that. Why didn't I submit something, right? So mm -hmm. I, I think we get in this spiral where we think what we're doing isn't that interesting because we see it every day. And, and, and I made a conscious decision a couple years ago to re be much more public about what I'm doing. And, and, and some people seem to like it, so I guess it's working. That's why you're here. Yeah. <laughs> I, I owe Alan that story. <laughs> this takes us back full circle to what um, Nancy reminded us at the beginning, that the student feedback part of this is really about learning. It's about us learning about um, what we are doing and why we're doing it with our classes. It's us, us learning about um, the perspective of the student and their learning and their, their activity, their engagement with the challenge. So it, that's really what this is about. It's the formative evaluation. It's formative learning, I guess. I was going to add, too, that it's not always about whether they liked it or not, too, right? Because I've done a lot of assignments. I learned a lot. I didn't particularly enjoy. So <laughs> it's, it's not about making friends either, right? It's, it's true. <laughs> that's a good reminder. Thank you, Terry. <laughs> So thank you for joining us. Unless anybody has anything else to say, um, we can keep this short so it's easy to view afterwards. <laughs> yeah, we, we're hitting 43 minutes here, so even if they watch it double time, it'll be a long one. Stick a fork in us. We're done. Yeah, I think so. So um, yeah, thanks for everyone for joining. I'll, I'll remember to hit the stop broadcast button, which means this will get recorded and up on YouTube. And uh, if you follow the original link to watch it, it will be recorded, and you can go ahead and, and and I'll be watching the Google Analytics every five minutes to see who's watching this video, <laughs> and it'll be all of us, right? There's 18 viewers right now, but I'm thinking five of them are Nancy because she keeps dropping off and coming back. <laughs> <laughs> Keep asking your questions. Active in in writing, at least you know, see what other people are posting there inside Dilo. Oh, then we lost Nancy again. 
Okay, so I think I'll, I'll cut this off now. Thank you, everyone, for joining, and we'll see you all again next week, probably same bat time, same bat channel, unless we uh, make any adjustments to that. And we'll see you all online. Thank you for joining us. And I'm going to hit the stop broadcast. Everyone wave like with the Brady Bunch. All right.